thank you so much for being here today. We're going to talk about a subject which I think is very exciting and something I really want to nut out and hear what the world is thinking. And that is computational photography. Now, when I say exciting, I'm excited about the conversation. Personally, I'm not so interested in computational photography. Each to their own. This is a brand agnostic conversation. I'm just really interested in talking about it a little bit to get the conversation started and to hear what everyone else has to say. So while we're chatting about this, in the background here, we've got some images from my recent trip to Canberra, Australia's national capital, shot on the Z7 as a little bit of background visual music. All right, let's talk computational photography. Now, today's title might be a contentious one, and I'm sorry, I don't want it to be, and this is not a Sony Canon or Nikon thing. This is just a conversation, and I want it to be a conversation. I actually want to hear from everybody else more than I want to hear from myself. But I suppose I will say a few things to get the conversation started, and then in the comments below, I want to hear what you think. Computational photography. What does this mean? Well. It's the idea that artificial intelligence, computers, etc., are going to really start making a lot of decisions for us. You now get multi-lensed cameras in phones, like the iPhone 11 and the latest Samsungs, etc., and they will get a shot from one camera that does one thing, a shot from another camera that does something different, and a shot from another camera, and they will piece all the good bits together. Now, computational photography kind of, I suppose, has no limits. What I mean by that is from a programming perspective, the more lenses that you add, the more things that you can do. To me, already having three lenses on the back of my phone is a bit weird. It's starting to look a little bit like an insect. And I suppose this could go on a little bit longer. Phones will just end up having lots of lenses on the back of them. And there's a tipping point there somewhere where what, what is this device? And what does it mean to photographers? And what does it mean to photography? And how should it change the way we think and what we do? Like I say in almost every video, and I think I'm going to repeat it in every video from now on, it's all about use case. What we're doing, what we're trying to achieve. Personally, computational photography and photographing with a phone is, is both of those things I don't want to do. I don't want a phone making lots of decisions and creating lots of permutations, creating files that might have 21 images in them. There's something like that in one version of what the iPhone does. And sure, you can probably dig out and find the individual images and pull it apart. But who wants to do that to each photo? I, I, I personally want to craft an image. I want to choose the shutter. I want to choose the aperture, the ISO, the focal length. I want to do all those things. And I want to make mistakes. And I want to improve. That's, that's the whole point of photography. It's a craft. It's a sport. It's something that we do at, to excel, to achieve more, to go on above and beyond. And computational photography takes a lot of that away from us. Of course, computational photography is heading into cameras. We're seeing very limited versions of computational photography relative to phones in, say, the Sonys. The thing they're mostly working on, I'm not overly aware of anything else. The thing that's new is face detect I detect and animal detect these uh, things that have been rolling out over the last few years into the mainstream. I detect and animal detect relatively new. And we hear about deep learning and all that sort of stuff, which ultimately at the end of the day is show a computer, show the software a million photos of an eye or an animal, and eventually it works out that that's the alignment of the pixels that represents an animal or an eye or a face. That's great. And this is not a conversation about who's right and who's wrong and who's better or who's worse. So let's not go down that path. That's not what this is about. It's just a conversation about computational photography. And that some people have said to me, well, I don't care what anyone's doing in particular. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what Nikon's doing. I don't care what Canon's doing. Computational photography is the future. Well, yeah, yes, people are working on it. Uh, the CIA and all those sorts of uh, agencies, I'm sure, have been working on 
face to tech way longer than camera companies have been. They've had this tech for a long time and they've had massive computers to work on it all for them. And me, personally, as a photographer, I want to make my own choices. That's all there is to it. I don't want the camera to take over what I do. That's my joy. My joy is to go into a scene and go, well, how do I make this average scene better by making choices that are not obvious? Now, if I just stick everything on auto, which is the computer in the camera making choices, is the camera making a choice about what it thinks we want? That's what's going on there. That is another form of automatic, just like eye detect and face detect is an automatic way to find a face or find an eye, right? This is just an earlier version of it. I wanna be in a position where I make the choice to change the exposure and to focus on the part that I might like. Now, sometimes it's the same as the computer and sometimes it's not. It's easier from my perspective and this is what I do, and this is what I do 99.9999999% of the time. Pretty much once every five years, I might stick onto auto because of some reason. And of course, beyond that, I choose my frame by pointing the camera in the direction I want to shoot, by getting the angle I want. Is it a Dutch tilt or is it not a Dutch tilt? And of course, I zoom or I walk. I'm making those choices. I've always made those choices. You make those choices. You choose to frame here, here, or here. You choose to walk forward or backward. Then in post, you can make a whole lot of other choices as well if you're shooting raw. Obviously you can a little bit in JPEG, but it's a bit baked in. Raw allows you much more flexibility. I like all of it to be my choice. Because sometimes, well, actually I've found the majority of the time, light meters in the camera don't know what I want. And it's simply quicker for me to choose. I do a lot of twilight and night photography. And there's a baseline when you're shooting in those situations. You don't actually need to change exposure. Let's say you're at ISO 64 at a 30th of a second at 1.8. And once it's night time, everything in the city is roughly at the right spot you need it to be. And then when a bright light that's a mile away pops up, it doesn't confuse the camera because you're on manual. And a bigger bright light comes on, it doesn't confuse the camera because you're on manual. So for so much of the shooting I do, it's actually way more efficient to just lock exposure settings off, not worry about the white balance because in a city, I like to shoot in cities, there are so many different color temperatures in one city street, the camera doesn't know what's going on anyway, so it doesn't matter. So computational photography, it's completely valid for so many people. And there's no question that billions of images are taken every week with phones that are doing computational photography right now. No, no one's saying it's not valid. It's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I love my craft. I love the art and the craft of making an image. And craft is what it's about for me. And that is part of the journey. And the journey is such a big part of the joy. We are all different. There is no right or wrong in this conversation. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Those who have and want and enjoy computational photography as it is today, continue to love it and want it and enjoy it. That's completely cool. And I would like that same right to allow me to continue the craft of photography, which I began as an 11 year old. And I will love this craft until the day I die. This is the joy of image making for me. And as the planet grows and we hit 8 billion people, this year is the estimate. I think there's gonna be a few million of us left who still really love that craft. We love the ability to make those choices. And as cameras evolve, we will continue to have these advantages added and we can continue to not use them or use them as we see fit. Some people are gonna love computational photography. Some people are gonna be in the middle and do a bit of both. And some people are gonna be pretty manual. There are people that are way more manual than me. They get a large format camera out in the field and then they have to work with plates 
and it's so hard and so difficult and they've still decided to shoot on film. And that's because they love it. And that's because they want what they get from that process and it's valid and it's fine. This is a discussion about what you're passionate about and what you want to do. So this video is really about you. It ends now with me saying, I would love to hear from you. Are you interested in computational photography? Is this something you're going to do a lot of? Or do you like manual? Do you like choosing your frame, your shutter, your aperture, your ISO, your focal length, your white balance? Is that something that you enjoy? Is that something you want to continue to do for the foreseeable future? I'd love to hear it. It's all about you. Let's get the word out there. So please share. That's what gets it out there. Please like. It also gets it out there. Please comment. I really want to hear what you have to say. And if you'd like to see any more of me right now, there is over 150 videos. If you click on the Matto and Photography just down there, you can watch right now. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun. And uh, I'm heading off to Tasmania for a week. So uh, wish me luck as I trek across the southernmost tip of Australia. This has been planned for six months, this trip. Wish me luck. All right, see you soon. Look forward to it with some hopefully awesome images from Tasmania. Bye.